Hello, I'm Chaz and I'm a solo developer making stuff in Unity. I've worked on a lot of projects in Unity since 2016, but I haven't completed any projects since most of the ideas had large scopes. I've also graduated in 2018 with a computer science degree, so I've been working in tech ever since. This video marks the first devlog in a series of videos I plan on making I'll call Project Jumpstart. My goal with Jumpstart is to take a project from concept to release in at most three months. The game is going to use Unity 3D, C Sharp scripting, and A Sprite for pixel art. I've made 3D games before, but I'm sticking to 2D to keep my art needs low. So grab a coffee and relax while I get started. My first design pillar is that I wanted to make a game with a 1-bit art style. What I like about 1-bit is that the palette is so limiting that it forces you to focus on the silhouette. The tile size will be 16 by 16 so that I have to make every pixel count. My second design pillar is that the game would be designed for mobile and easy to pick up and play. The first mock-up I made was a Game Boy Palette alien style shoot 'em up but after some more Android research, I remembered I loved playing those pixel dungeon RPGs where every action equals one turn. One of the things I like from this design is the randomization of the dungeons and also that the player's actions are pretty simple. All they have to do is walk into an enemy to damage them and their objective is just to find the staircase that leads to the next level of the dungeon. I also drew up this mock-up of an apocalyptic zombie game as a Pokemon style RPG. Although I like the look of this mock-up, it doesn't fit in theme with the dungeon tile based gameplay but I would still like to do something involving zombies or the apocalypse in some way. So I began creating a mockup in paint.net of a simple core game loop. The player spawns inside a randomly generated tile maze just like those dungeon RPGs. Inside the maze will be patrolling zombies and other monsters. The premise is that the player is a survivor driving across the wasteland to find safety. In every maze, a gas canister will spawn in a random position. The player must find the gas can and return back to the car to continue to the next level or maze. This is inspired by the pixel dungeon RPGs, but instead the gas can behaves like a key to the next dungeon and it stays in theme with the survival aesthetic. I began working on the game design doc using an MDA framework. I won't go over this, but in the past I would tend to skip over this part of game development. I like to jump straight into the prototypes, so this time I wanted to slow down, make sure I planned everything out before moving on. At this point I also created a Trello board to go along with it. On every project I start, I use Trello to make sure I manage my tasks and sort them by type helps me prioritize my objectives a lot easier. And with that, that marks the end of pre-production, and now I begin to work inside the Unity Editor. I started a new 2D project in Unity 2020 LTS. As a tip, always use an LTS build for Unity or long-term support builds since they will be more stable than the newest one. Next, I worked on animations for the main character, Limited to 1 bit and 16 by 16, it's fun trying to find a good silhouette that essentially uses the player's imagination to interpret the pixels. Once I had an animated player, I got it moving using 16 pixels per unit and grid snapping. The player will simply move one unit in all directions for now. Then I added a lerping or linear interpolation, so even though it's clearly tile based, the player appears to be walking smoothly from one tile to the next. Additionally, I hooked up some on-screen buttons to move the player. For now I'm using keyboard inputs, but eventually I'll transition to rewired input as I highly recommend using that asset over the default Unity system. Next up is the maze algorithm. We're using a 2D array algorithm where we start off as all tiles marked as negative one. We surround it with walls and then we choose a random start marking it as empty. Then we traverse until we hit all nodes marking them as visited. We backtrack to see if there's any unvisited nodes. Finally, we break some walls so that it's easy to traverse. Convert them to walls by marking them as one, and then we have our final maze. And this is what the final algorithm looks like when it's converted to a 2D tile map inside of Unity. Yeah, I figured I'd give an intermission. The video is going to get kind of long because I still have so much more to go. But thanks for sticking with it if you're still here. And if you enjoy it, please subscribe, share it with some friends or something. But if you don't want to, that's chill. Just watch it, enjoy. Um, let me know if you have anything you want to learn about. 
and maybe I'll do a video, show some code snippets, but I'm keeping it kind of light for the first one. But yeah, let's get back to it. Hope you enjoy. The weapon system in the game is separated into two parts, weapon controller and weapon data. The weapon data holds information about the equipped weapon, such as ammo type, name, sprites, and damage. Damage will be dealt based on the range of the shot. For example, a sniper deals more damage at long range than up close. Additionally, my third design pillar is that small decisions have lasting effects. To meet this concept, ammo will be scarce and limited, kind of like survival horror. The player will have to decide if they want to run or fight monsters. To fire the weapon, the player presses and holds the fire button. During this time, they can change the direction they want to fire. When they let go of the button, the weapon is fired and a little animation plays. The last thing I worked on this week was the ammo UI. Since we are working with very limited resolution size, I needed to find a way to both represent the ammo count and the ammo type to the player. What I came up with was a magazine UI that is filled with bullet sprites of the current ammo type. To make this effect, I had to make my own physics solution. It turns out that when you're using Unity 2D physics, it doesn't work well with a canvas because when it scales up to different resolutions or scales down, the physics becomes inconsistent. So I needed something that would be constant across all resolution sizes and mobile devices. My last design pillar is to keep the game as simple as possible, avoid text, and make sure the game is easy to pick up and play. To top it off, I added some dude tween animations to make the reload effect. Then I added a dithered sprite mask to make it appear as if the tiles fade into view of the camera. At the end of the week I started work on the item system. So far I just have the ammo item. The player reloads their weapon simply by walking over it. Every maze will have a random loot chest spawning in a random position. That way the player has to search for it to find resources. We got a lot done this week, so thanks for sticking around to watch it all. This devlog took a lot longer to edit than I thought it would, so I'm going to upload devlogs on a 2-4 to four week basis. Subscribe to my channel if you want to follow development, or follow me on Twitter as well. I'll occasionally stream game development on Twitch if you want to go there too. Let me know what you think of my first devlog, and any comments or criticisms, put it down in the comments below. Thanks.